terms of moral reformation, uh, analogous. We uh, must work passionately and unrelentingly for first class citizenship. For instance, if the average so called Negro, he doesn't think that he can uh, go into business and provide jobs for himself. We've got to get smart. We've got to organize. And because of this, he thinks that he can only get a job from the white man, or he can only get clothes from the white man, or he can only get food from the white man. We've got to organize so effectively and so well, and engage in such powerful, creative protest, that there will not be a power in the world that can stop us. we got to be proud to be black. Don't worry about what they say. We gotta think smarter and live smarter. We gotta want more and work harder. Cause they ain't giving it to us. Put you all in. If you truly wanna make it, can't be waiting for handouts, baby. You gotta take it. Like Martin gotta have a dream, cause he had one. Like Malcolm by any means, gotta get that done. Don't be ashamed of who we are. Stick your chest out proud. Make them believe that you're the best. Show them what you about. We gotta love each other. Stop killing each other. We gotta unitize and don't believe the lies. This is a message to the blacks and any other. The minority live well and love self. That's the priority. T-P. Been taught for so many centuries that they are nobody is not easy. So they very skillfully uh, made you and me hate our African identity. Maybe the English language should be reconstructed so that teachers will not be forced to teach the Negro child 60 ways to despise himself and thereby perpetuate his false sense of inferiority. Hey. Our features and our skin and our blood, while we had to end up hating ourselves, it made us feel inferior. We must no longer be ashamed of being black. See, I knew you wasn't gonna see me. Gotcha. <laughs> Thanks, John. Yeah, I slowed it down, but it just wasn't reacting. I did. I saw your signal, but I, I okay. wasn't reacting. All right, we're going to get that together. I, it still all sound good to me. Huh. <laughs> uh, see, John Bo, everybody. I'm your host, Catherine Hunter Williams, along with my co host, Miss Catherine Blake. Hello, everybody. And we welcome you all back once again to Satoris Black History Corner Internet Program. Amen. As always, we'd like to invite you to call in with any questions or comments at 810-208-1854. Once again, 810-208-1854. We not only tell our story about past great heroes and sheroes, but also about those living in the, pres in the present day with us today. Oh. Today we're going to tell our story about Isaac Scott Hathaway. If we have time, we'll talk about the first airships, where we're, which were called dirigible balloons. <laughs> and Miss B will speak about the upcoming Juneteenth celebration being held in downtown Flint. Amen. June 16th through the 19th. 19th. Right? Mm hmm Okay. All right, Miss B, let's pass it on. All right. Okay. Um, first off, I'd like to say, uh, please pray for Nelson Van... Man Oh, Mandela. My Lord. Mandela. I'm telling you, sometimes my words get just. Uh, pray for mm -hmm. Nelson Mandela, from uh, former president of South Africa. He mm -hmm. has a, a long, a serious lung infection. He's in um, uh, ICU, which is uh, intensive care unit. They say he's serious but stable. Mm -hmm. So please pray for him that his health is restored and that that uh, lung infection is removed. Amen. Amen. Now, I'd also like to uh, congratulate uh, Flint's legendary radio personality, Sam Williams, who All will right. be honored, who was honored on, uh, I think it was in May. I think it was in May. Anyway, for over 50 years, Sam Williams has earned his stripes in radio. Yes, he has. And will, he was recognized for his broad career on the airways, the Sam Williams Sunday Morning Gospel Show is touted as the longest running and highest radi rated radio program in Flint. Uh, this happened on Saturday, June 15th, so that was just, oh, wait a minute, it hasn't happened yet. Okay, y'all could go. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but I'm saying congratulations to him now. Uh, 
Sam Williams has worked for three radio stations, including WBBC and and Wham. Wham is when I first heard him when right. I was a little girl. Wham. And he, um, that was the only station that we had in the city of Flint where we could hear black music. Mm -hmm. I mean, we was proud of that. We would wait for sundown because that's not sundown, but he would come on about three and stay on till sundown. And that's when we had our right. wham jam time. Yes. So Sam I'd like Williams. to say to you, Mr. Sam Williams, congratulations. Congratulations. He's going to be honored over at the Whiting. Mm. The Whiting. The that's, Whiting. That's a big thing. That's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's going to be Saturday, June 15th. So that's just coming up Saturday. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Today is the 10th. Okay. All right. So congratulations to you, uh, Mr. Sam Williams. We're very proud of you, and we're so glad of the accomplishments and yeah. achievements that you have made in the city of Flint. And I thank you also for helping me over the years when I was out there with the museum and everything. And we also honored him, remember? Yes, I remember. At the festival mm -hmm. uh, for the Keep On Keeping On uh, Community African American Festival back in the day when we was Absolutely. out there. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Oh, that's still going on, too. But we'll talk some more about that. Maybe we'll have Elliot or somebody come on Amen. next month or yes. whatever. I'll talk about it. That's uh, the next month. Yes, July. Mm -hmm. The third weekend of July. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to it. Keep because on keeping on. Yep. That's where I can go get my little, I get a lot of tops from down there. <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you for that. And please, I think it's, you could call the Whiting and get tickets to go to that. I thought it was already done, but it's not. So um, make sure you go and just show him, you know, show him your support, show him your love, and get you some tickets and go and see this great, uh, because I've never seen him honor anybody at the Whiting that I know that's black. That, right. In the city of Flint, that is our largest uh, uh, stage mm -hmm. venue, uh, yeah. in the city of Flint mm -hmm. as far as that is concerned as an auditorium. And it's prominent, prestigious. Yes, yes. So... Show him your support and love and, and, and let people know, let the, let him know how much you care for him. Amen. All right, because without Sam Williams, ooh, ooh. we wouldn't have had no music back in the day. Mm -hmm. And this was in the 60s. Mm -hmm. So y'all know what we was listening to before him. Right. Okay. All right, let's get to who I want to talk about. He mm -hmm. is the first American African who designed a U.S. Mint coin 66 years ago. Not today, but 66 years ago. His name is Isaac Scott Hathaway. Yeah, there you go. He made, uh, he was chosen as the first American African to design a U.S. Mint coin uh, back 66 years ago. I'm repeating myself. Then President Harry S. Truman authorized a commission for the Mint to jumpstart the design of a new 50 cent piece. Mm. Hathaway received the clearance to design the coin which featured educator and author Booker T. Washington. Hmm. I wish I could get some of them 50 cent pieces. I didn't know that. I didn't know it. I haven't seen it either. Yeah. Well, it, there he is. Who was chosen as the coin's face because Truman wanted to commun commemorate the life and perpetuate the ideas of and teachings of Booker T. Washington. Didn't know that. Mm. Okay, Booker T. Washington was one of the founders of the Tuskegee Institute down there in Tuskegee, Alabama. So there, as you can see, that was the first American African U.S. Mint coin that has a picture of Booker T. Washington. I wonder, and it's a 50 cent piece, I wonder if they're still around today. I haven't seen there's a 50 cent piece in years. There's a coin shop across the street from Cortland Center, you know, right there on Court Street. We can East go Coast and street. find out? Yeah, you can find out. Maybe they can get you one if you want one. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a coin shop there. They're really nice people, too. I forget the name of the place, but I've done business there. Cortland Center? Cor across from Cortland Center, it's um right behind the Ponderosa there. You know, right beside Oh, yeah, that, that, that little plaza there. Yeah, that little plaza okay. there. Yep. Okay. I mean, Hathaway's historical, historic moment was followed it up in 1951 with another request to design a commemorative 50 cent coin featuring American African innovator George Washington Carver. What? Which he was commissioned for. Mm -hmm. there, that's the picture with both of them on there. 
I did, could not find the one that just had the one with just George Washington Carver on there. But that picture that you're looking at right now has George Washington Carver on it and Booker T. Washington on it. Hathaway's life began in, in, in Lexington, Kentucky. He was raised primarily by a single father. Hmm. As a boy at age nine, a curious Hathaway visit a museum. That's why I would take my children to museums and all kind of places mm -hmm. when they was growing up to give them something and they put in their head some culture. Uh, he visited a museum full of famous white Americans with his father and asked where a bust of his hero, Frederick Douglass, was. <laughs> uh, Halfway uh, eventually created Douglass's bust, which can be seen uh, at his, it's a museum that they have uh, for uh, him, and I didn't get that information, I don't think, and I might have it. I had to look a little further. Um, his father told him that there were no trained black sculptures to, to craft the, the bust of famous American Africans. Hathaway then reportedly said to his father, I'm going to model bust of Negroes and put them where people can see them. All right. So he made a bust of... Uh, Frederick his Douglas. Frederick Douglass, his favorite person. Uh, he attended many colleges, including uh, Chandler, Pittsburgh, I'm sorry, Chandler College, Pittsburgh Normal College, mm. Cincinnati Art Academy, the College of Ceramics of, State of, of the State of University of New York, the C Ceramic College at the State of University of Cam Kansas. At these colleges, Halfway studied art, history, and ceramics, but he also developed an interest in sculpture. And upon finishing his schooling, Halfway returned to Kentucky. In Kentucky, Halfway worked as a teacher in an elementary school. Halfway began to make his own pieces in his spare time. Most of Halfway's pieces were sculptures. He is most noted for, us, uh, for his bust of famous American Africans, including, like I said, his personal history, hero, Frederick Douglass. The medium of most of his pieces were plaster, but he also made some of bronze. Halfway su halfway's success had lasting effects. He taught at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff before moving to Tuskegee Institute. He became a founding member of the Department of Ceramics at Tuskegee's Institute. He was also the first American African, as I said earlier, to design a U.S. coin. During his life, Halfway designed two U.S. coins. His first coin was a 50-cent piece bearing the face of Booker T. Washington in 1946, and his second was of George Washington Carver in 1951. Halfway's works I displayed in a museum bearing his name in Oklahoma City. <laughs> I, as Isaac uh, Scott Halfway joined his ancestors in March 1967. Wow. Yeah. Oh, in the back of that coin, John, can you show the coin of um, where Car uh, George Washington Carver and Booker T. Washington, the two faces on there? On the back of the coin, it says, Freedom and Opportunity for all Americanism. Mm. That's on the back of that coin, and it has a, a, a the United States of America is a picture of the country on the back. So if y'all can, as John has told us, there is a coin shop uh, right across the street from the Cortland Center behind Ponderosa. There's a plaza there. So maybe if you want to get these coins, these 50 cent coins, because I don't know if any of them out here, mm -hmm. uh, you can mm -hmm. go to that shop and see if someone make an order for you. And uh, put it in your collection. I'm, I'm going to see if I can try check it out. Yeah. All right. That's our story on Isaac Scott Halfway. Very interesting. It, it was. It was very interesting. Now I wanted to talk to you about, we got good time. Mm -hmm. Get to do this one because we've been trying to do this one for a long time. Yeah, and we never got right. out of here. <laughs> the dirigibles. The dirigibles, Yes. The dirigibles, in some countries, airships are also known as dirigibles. From the French dirigible, dirger, to direct, direct plus able, meaning directable, or steerable. The first airships was called dirigible balloons, which you can see those pictures up there. Over time, the word balloon was dropped from the phrase. 
In modern usage, balloons refer to any buoyant aircraft that generally relies on wind currents for her horizontal movement and usually has a mechanism to control vertical movement. All right. In 1900, John F. Pickering of Genovese, Haiti, received a U.S. patent for his design of airship or launch, number 643975. It combined a balloon and attached car carried a motor. That's what a dirigible actually is. Mm -hmm. Let me get some, let me move some of this confusion here. Uh, there is some confusion around the term aerostat with, with regards to airships. Uh, this confusion arises because aerostat has two different meanings. One meaning of aerostat refers to all craft that remain aloft using buoyancy, static, not dynamic lift. In this sense, airships are a type of aerostat. The narrow and more technical meaning of aerostat refers only to tethered or moored M-O-O-R-E-D, balloons. In this sense, airships are not aerostats. Can you show that other picture, John? Of the, yeah, there you go. Now you see that little part that's on the bottom of that ship? Mm -hmm. It has a little, look like a, I guess where people can sit in there and everything. It's a, it's called a, a blimp's gondola. Hmm. The term gondola is used to describe a crew car of an airship slung beneath the center of the envelope. These may be short for cockpits and landing gear alone or longer to provide passenger space. Early gondolas were open structures slung beneath the envelope. Later ones were enclosed and hung directly from the internal framing. A non-rigid blimp carried all of its passengers within a gondola. Yeah, I don't think I want to ride on one of them. Mm -mm. Rigid airships may have further passengers or cargoes space internal to the envelope. The large airship of the Graf Zeppelin, the one you're looking at, was noted for its distinctly short passenger gondola, mounted far forward so it, as to improve ground clearance. The majority of the crew ac accommodation and cargo holes were placed inside the envelope. Now let's get back to the dirigible. The dirigible is the one that makes it moves. It drives it. And it was invented by John F. Pickering, Pickering of Genovese, Haiti, Haiti. in 1900s. Wow. <laughs> it combined a balloon and attached car carrying a motor and a propeller. Fans driven by the motor, air pipes, provided with bent, movable outlets leading both upward and downward from the fan extending through the balloon and the bottom of the car and means for shifting the blast of the fan to either upward or downward air pipes. The operator would also be in control of the propulsion, propulsion horizontally or at any desired angle with relation to the horizon. horizon or the turning of the same to any desired point of the compass. That is a dirigible, okay? And there's a movable dirigible because of this invention by John F. Pickering of Genovese, Haiti in the 1900s. Wow. That's our story. That's our story about the airship, a dirigible that I've been trying to tell y'all about in a long time because when I found out that actually he was the one who had a patent for his design of an airship or launch. You know, it combined a balloon and everything, and it was operator. It, it just has so many. It makes it move, provided with bent movable outlets so they could move forward or whatever mm -hmm. to sit down and everything. And it's a whole lot more to this. You could go and find this out on Wiki Wikipedia airships, uh, forward slash airships. Uh, that's to find out about that terminology and to find out about John F. Pickering. Uh, he was also born in uh, February, uh, rematch. I'm sorry. I couldn't find a bio on him. 
couldn't find anything on him. But it's by an electric motor and have directional controls, and that's what he invented. Hmm. That's our story of John F. Picking. Pickering. 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 All right. All right. Couldn't find anything other than that on him, but it, he's related to the dirigible uh, by having the motor, developing the motor for it. And it's a whole lot more inf information about this, and it's all pretty interesting. But to find that little bit of information that he did that, uh, this makes the operator would be also in control of the propulsion, uh, the movement of mm -hmm. the thing going forward or horizontally, propulsion horizontally or at any desired angle with relations to the horizon mm -hmm. or the turning of the same to any desired point of the compass. Amen. All right. So now we have, you have the history on that. Now we're going to move and let Miss 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 B give you some information about the upcoming Juneteenth celebration that's happening downtown Flint. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, I, I would like to congratulate uh, Rhode Island for becoming the 42nd state to recognize Juneteenth as a state holiday. So now there's 42 states. Uh, there are eight more states to go, but uh, I think it's uh, Utah and Montana. They uh, recognize Juneteenth as uh, an observance. So it's not a state holiday, but they do have an observance. They do. They just, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And you could do it at home, have your right. own celebration, mm -hmm. private celebration or whatever. Well, this year, uh, this is, hopefully this will be a very special year. Uh, because Juneteenth is going to be celebrated in Washington, D.C. And uh, the National Juneteenth Committee it has petitioned President Obama to uh, develop legislation uh, to recognize Juneteenth as a national holiday. You think he's going to do it? Oh, yeah. He's going to do it before he come out of office. Okay. And they're, they're really looking for him to do that this year, we know he's busy with a lot of things. And uh, on the 19th, um, I believe they said it's going, there's going to be a celebration at the White House. Yeah, yeah. I heard about yeah, that Yeah, it's going to be a yeah. celebration at the White House. And they're really looking forward to him uh, recognizing Juneteenth as a Would national Would this be holiday. his first time having a Juneteenth celebration at the White House? I mean, this is his fifth year in there, right? Yes. Uh, he's been a speaker in Washington, D.C., but uh, as far as having it on the ground, mm. I think this is it. It's the first time? Uh-huh. Okay. So any recognition by a president is great. Right, right. Okay. Well, he wasn't president when he was a speaker. He was still a... I know, but a, yeah, I'm talking yeah. about uh, him having a celebration right. this year at the, at the White, White House. House. Right. That is uh, an uh, accomplishment for the Juneteenth, National Juneteenth right. Committee, just right. a president recognizing and celebrating it. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yes. yes, right, right. And I know that there are probably some out there that want to know what is Juneteenth. And Juneteenth or June 19th uh, for 1865 is considered the date when the last slaves in America were free. And although rumors of freedom were widespread prior to this, the actual emancipation did not come until General Gordon Granger rode into Galveston. And that picture you see there is so, something new to me because you see General Gordon Granger there with his troops. And I did not know till today that his troops, were, were that was a black unit. That's a black unit that ha that's with him on there. Praise and the Lord. And they call them the heroes. The, the heroes uh, of Juneteenth. Of Juneteenth. Wow. That is some new information for me. And just say you're never too old to learn. Nope. We're Amen. never too old. We learn something every, new every day. Okay. And uh, uh, General Gordon, when he rode into Galveston, Texas, and issued General Orders Number 3, on June 19th, and that was almost two and a half years after President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. And now there are probably some of you that say, well, but didn't the Emancipation Proclamation free the enslaved? 
Okay, President Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation on September 22nd in 1862, notifying the states in rebellion against the Union that if they did not cease their rebellion and return to the Union by January 1st, 1863, now that's also called the, the Night Watch, you know, where uh, the enslaved people were up all night long. You know, they still do that today in churches. They have that night watch for the new year coming in. Yeah. On the 31st and then going into yep. the 1st. They're waiting for emancipation. Waiting for emancipation. Mm -hmm. And uh, for January 1st, 1863, he would declare their slaves free forever. Needless to say, the proclamation was ignored by those states that succeeded from the Union. And furthermore, the proclamation did not apply to those slaveholding states that did not rebel against the Union. And as a result, over 800,000 slaves w were unaffected by the provisions of the proclamation. It, it would take the Civil War to enforce the Emancipation Proclamation and the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution to formally outlaw slavery in the United States. Uh, June, it says, when, he, when is Juneteenth celebrated? Uh, actually, on June 19th in the Flint area, we usually take the 13th through the 19th, depending on our funding. Um, this year, uh, the economy is bad everywhere, so we're only celebrating for three days. The 16th, we're having the youth dinner. The 18th, we're having jazz in, at Mac, jazz in the park at the riverfront, uh, the Flint River, front, the Flint River Park, park, the river bank. front park, river bank, river bank park, park. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, yeah, sometimes it get tough. Yeah. That. And uh, on the 19th, we'll have the Juneteenth parade, and there also. Uh, be activities going on down at the Flint Riverbank Park. The Juneteenth Parade will be uh, getting together on the at the Max Brandon Park on Pasadena. Now that whole week um, from June 16th through the 21st, uh, Salem Housing will be having Family Fun Week. And they're going to have all types of activity, all types of activities for the young people and families in Max Brandon Park. And the Juneteenth parade on the 19th will start line up at three o'clock, and we'll probably pull out about 5:30. We'll march from Max Brandon Park to the Riverbank, the Flint Riverbank Park downtown, which is about a two and a half mile march. And, from uh, Pasadena, yeah, from Pasadena to downtown, mm -hmm. and uh, that 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 is one of the most the biggest parades in the state of Michigan. Uh, the Flint Juneteenth Parade has always been noted as a large parade, and it is in the state of Michigan. In the state of Michigan, the largest Juneteenth. No, the largest parade. Period. There has the larger been one. than those down in Detroit. Detroit doesn't have one. I, they, I know they don't have a Juneteenth one. That's why I'm asking you. Mm -hmm. It's the largest Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. okay, Detroit well, has a lot of parades down there, and they have some large parades. That's what I'm saying. It's the largest Juneteenth. Okay, I'll go with Juneteenth, but that's not what I was told. Mm -hmm. I was told we have the Flint uh, Juneteenth celebration has the largest parade in the state, state of, of Michigan. Michigan. Really? Yes. That's what I was told. Larger than the Macy parades and all that stuff down there. No, in no, Detroit. that's not in Michigan. In Detroit. In Detroit. They have them parades down there. That's in New York. That's New York, but they have them in Detroit too. Yeah, but that's not yeah, no, no. Okay. Okay. I'm just asking. <laughs> just want to make sure I got it right. <laughs> And uh, on the 16th, the, the youth dinner, uh, they uh, honor the, uh, the, uh, the Suedo uprising of the youth in uh, 
Johannes in Soweto, South Africa. Uh, a lot of those youth were gunned down because they were trying, they were protesting against uh, the education they were receiving. They wanted a better education. They wanted better jobs. They were having a peaceful protest and they ended up being gunned down uh, by the South African police. So we celebrate, not celebrate, we observe uh, and we honor those Soweto youth on the 16th. That happened June the 16th in 1976. And we are instilling history in our youth to honor the youth of Soweto back from those days. Uh, there's a lot of things going. We have a jazz concert that's going to be downtown. Uh, I hope everybody, everybody in the city of Flint will participate uh, in the parade and participate downtown. We do, we do have uh, a lot of entertainment uh, for the two days for you, the June 18th and June the 19th. Those two days will be at the Riverbank Park on June 16th. That uh, youth dinner will be at Genesee County uh, Community Resource Department, G-Card, on Saginaw Street at 601 North Saginaw Street. And that starts at 5 o'clock. And I think there's going to be a charge for the dinner this year, but just a couple of dollars. Uh, the economy is bad, so there's going to be uh, a surcharge added on to the, to the dinner. But there are a lot of things going on, and we hope you enjoy the Juneteenth celebration wherever you are. And just remember that, oh, I got a little acronym uh, I wanted to say about Juneteenth, too. Um, that I really it says here that it, on, on June 19th in more than 200 cities in the United States is celebrated. Some cities sponsor week-long celebrations culminating on the June 19th, while others hold shorter celebrations. But I also want to comment on this. It says here, why not just celebrate the 4th of July like other Americans? Well, uh, where were black people? They were still enslaved on the 4th of July. And... Uh, what was that? 1776. Mm -hmm. You were not free until 1865. Yep. It said blacks do not celebrate the 4th of July in honor of American Independence Day, but history reminds us that blacks were still enslaved All right. when the United States obtained its independence. It also, it says, it symbolizes the end of slavery. Juneteenth has come to symbolize for many American Africans what the 4th of July symbolizes for all Americans, freedom. Mm -hmm. Now, we're not telling anybody not to celebrate uh, the 4th of July because we are all Americans. But Afri people of African descent, you must remember, your people were enslaved at that time. They were not free. And you were not counted as a human being a full human being. You were only counted as three-fifths of a human. The Read what Frederick Douglass has to say about it. Just go on the internet <laughs> and find out the speech Frederick Douglass had about the 4th of July. Right, right. There, has there's nothing for us, really, at that time. No, we that are was not for us. All Americans uh, in this country, as you said. Right. And so we do celebrate to alone. Well, we want, to re we want people to remember our ancestors who survived the inhumane institution of bondage, as well as demonstrating pride in the marvelous legacy to, of resistance. Remember that resistance and the perseverance that they left us. And um, I wanted to give you this here about Juneteenth, this sacrament. J-U-N-E-T-E-E-N-T-H, Juneteenth. Juneteenth, J, represents the joy of freedom, a chance for a new beginning. You, unless you expose the truth about African-American slave experience, Americans won't truly be free. Amen. N, never must we forget our ancestors' endurance of one of the worst slave experiences John, in could you put that picture history. of Juneteenth up, uh, the, 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 uh, the emblem again? E. Yes. 
every American has benefited from the wealth blacks created through over 200 years of free labor. And Juneteenth allows us to acknowledge that debt. T, to, uh, to encourage every former slaveholding state to follow Texas and Oklahoma's example and make Juneteenth a state holiday. Now, in Texas and Oklahoma, what they're saying, their state holiday, business is closed. You have a day off from work. Now, it's exactly whether they have paid holiday off. I don't know that. Yeah. But I do know but that at least the they are. Are, You're right. And, and they don't do that here in Flint. You have to take it. You just have to say, I'm not going in. I'm celebrating my holiday. Well, the, the, the holiday celebrated for a state holiday here is that Saturday. It's not necessarily the 19th. It's the third Saturday oh, so, of the month. Okay, so it's, everything is closed anyway. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, On that Saturday. Right. Mm-hmm. E, every day in America, blacks are reminded of the legacy of slavery. Juneteenth counters that by reminding us of a promise of deliverance. The other E, it even on the journey to discover who we are, Juneteenth allows us to reflect on where we've been, where we are at, and where we are going as a people. In never give up hope is the legacy our enslaved ancestors left. I'm going to say that again. Never give up hope is the legacy our enslaved ancestors left. It was this legacy that produced black heroism in the Civil War and helped launch the modern civil rights era. It is this legacy that we celebrate. T. To proclaim for all the world to hear the human rights must never again become subservient to property rights. H, history books have only told a small part of the history. Juneteenth gives us a chance to set that record straight. Freedom is always worth celebrating. Yes, it is. June and fighting 10th. for it, too, to keep it. Absolutely. Yep. So we hope to see y'all down there at the Flint River Bank Park on June 19th. But there's activities going on from June 16th mm -hmm. all the way to the 19th. Mm -hmm. And we hope that you, uh, uh, Catherine, would you give them a number that they could call? Yes, you can call Paul Herring at 239 uh, 810 239-2901, that's 810-239-2901, or you can call me. My number is 810-701-4569, Catherine Blake, 810-701-4569. I am the parade chair. So get in contact with her, and I'm sure they need vendors. So come on down, y'all. Get on out there and call those numbers, 810-239-2901 and 701-4569. Yes. All right. Come on and help and cel celebrate, support, and get out and help with the, the and ce <clears throat> celebrate our Juneteenth, which is a part of our heritage this time and this date and time. Yes, our proclamation of freedom. Yep. Celebrate the freedom. Yeah. Just that's what it's about. It symbolizes freedom. Symbolize so freedom. celebrate freedom. Yeah. I wanted to make a correction here. I'm not sure if I said this right about J.F. Pickering, who was um, in 1900 of Genovese, Haiti, invented one of the first airships w well known as the Blimp. <laughs> and, and he was issued a U.S. patent, number 643975, for the first dirigible, which I told y'all, dirigible mm -hmm. is what makes it move. It's, it's uh, a motor and a propeller uh, by an e electric motor and have directional control. So I just wanted to make sure I got that right because I, even I got a little confused with what dirigibles were. <laughs> okay, so I hope y'all got that right. Uh, also, I want to announce Check Your Move. Come, learn, and play chess on the second and fourth Saturdays of each month. 
at Page's Bookstore starting, I'm sorry, June 22, 2013 from 1 to 3 p.m. at Page's Bookstore, 132 West 2nd Street. It's located downtown Flint, right at the corner of Buckham Alley between Beach and South Saginaw Street. There is limited seating, so please call 810-767-7243 or email and register check your move 22 at gmail.com to reserve your space. We hope to see y'all there. We hope y'all enjoyed the program today. Amen. Uh, please pray for um, Nelson, Mandela. Nelson Mandela. Look, I'm trying to find my ending. I lost it in here. Pray for Melson Bandela and contract, uh, go and support June Team Celebration, mm -hmm. uh, June 16th through the 19th. I think one of those days you're not doing something, right? The 17th. The 17th. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, also, congratulations for uh, Sam Williams. Mm -hmm. Celebrate him also, his uh, uh, 50 years of being in the radio business. And All right. congratulations to Rhode Island for becoming the 42nd state to recognize Juneteenth as a state holiday. All right, I'm going to skip a lot of stuff. We hope you enjoyed the song you heard at the beginning of our program, Be Proud to Be Black. And if you would like to purchase the CD single, you can contact TP at 810-962-3258. That's 810-962-3258. Finally, as always, I'd like to say Asante to all of you who have watched our program today. I thank you so much, thank those you. that support us and come in and view us. Now, pass it on to others. I'm telling you, we're going to be number one if they get out there and do what I ask them to do. <laughs> pass it on. Pass it on to 10 people. Tell them 10 people to pass it on. And we'll be the number one show over here. Amen. All right. Um, due to my, Oh, okay. This is an old one. Okay. In the meantime... While you're waiting for our next program, keep on keeping on with us, along with the sound of T.P.'s CD single, Be Proud to Be Black. May God bless you, keep you safe, and in his perfect hotel, which means peace. Young, gifted, and black. of moral reformation, uh, a knowledge of We self. must work passionately and unrelentingly for first-class citizenship. For instance, if the average so-called Negro, he doesn't think that he can uh, go into business and provide jobs for himself. We've got to get small. We've got to organize. And because of this, he thinks that he can only get a job from the white man, or he can only get clothes from the white man, or he can only get food from the white man. We've got to organize so effectively and so well and engage in such powerful creative protest that there will not be a power in the world that can stop us. We gotta be proud to be black. Don't worry about what they say. We gotta think smarter and live smarter. We gotta want more and work harder. Cause they ain't giving it to us. Put you all in. If you truly wanna make it, can't be waiting for handouts, baby. You gotta take it. Like Martin gotta have a dream, cause he had one. Like Malcolm, by any means, gotta get that done. Don't be ashamed of who you are. Stick your chest out proud. Make them believe that you're the best. Show them what you about. We gotta love each other. Stop killing each other. We gotta unitize and don't believe the lies. This is a message to the blacks and any other. The minority live well and love self. That's the priority. TP been taught for so many centuries that they are nobody is not easy. So they very skillfully uh, made you and me hate our African identity. Maybe the English language should be reconstructed so that teachers will not be forced to teach the Negro child 60 ways to despise himself and thereby perpetuate his false sense of inferiority. Our features and our skin and our blood, why we had to end up hating ourselves. It made us feel inferior. We must no longer be ashamed of being black.